Hi everyone, my name is Jen and welcome to The Book Refuge and welcome to a interesting video. So I recently put up a question box on my YouTube community page. I do this pretty often. I'm um, asking for recommendations. I was just feeling a little bit blocked. I didn't know which videos I wanted to film today because on Saturday and Sunday I try to film all my books for the week um, and try to get ahead as best as I can and I was just having trouble. And someone recommended to me books I love with tropes I hate. And I can't remember if I've made a book like this before. I didn't go back and check. Um, I think I might have done something kind of like it a long time ago. But I've definitely seen my friends do ones like this before. And I was like, let's go ahead and throw this together. Because it is really interesting to see which tropes. Number one, talking about which tropes that we hate. And number two, which books the author is able to break through to me. And I still love their story, even if just hearing the premise, I'm like, nah, I don't really want to read this story. So I went ahead and picked three tropes that I don't really like, and I'm going to do either three or four books about each of them. So we'll go trope by trope. So the first one I want to start with is cheating. This is kind of funny because I don't think this is necessarily like a trope. I think it's more of like a thing that happens in a book and I mean I think most of us would say this like there are some people who straight up admit they're like I like cheating in a book I like seeing the angst that it brings or what it does um and surprisingly there were a few of books some that are like five star six star books for me that have cheating take place in them and generally my like rule about how it works for me is that the spouse that we are cheating on is abusive or it's a situation where we cannot leave them or else it's a situation of like miscommunication that maybe that happens in and I will show you some examples of what I mean by that obviously so the first one I want to talk about and I think this is a pretty well known one at this point and it's just a gut-wrenching story it's absolutely beautiful is Long Shot by Kennedy Ryan this book has trigger warnings for domestic abuse it is like it's a hard book to read guys you will cry your way through this I actually have a signed copy of this it's really pretty um, but this book is about Iris and August and they meet each other at a time when Iris is already in a relationship with this man named Caleb and she's pretty happy with him in this relationship she has big plans for herself and then later on they run into each other when um, August is on an opposite team of Caleb and she has now been with him a while and they will probably be getting married someday her career is building and it's never the right time for her in August. Then things go along further in her relationship with Caleb and it becomes very clear that she is not going to be able to easily extract herself from a relationship with Caleb. And he becomes very abusive. It's very frightening. There is, um, it's not spousal rape, but partner rape that happens in this story. Um, and August has no idea what's going on. He doesn't understand why this smart, bright woman is with someone that he knows to be pretty like cruel and manipulative just from how he's seen him be on the basketball court and so the reason why the cheating in this story works for me is I don't really consider it cheating and I'll tell you why Iris is not able to leave this relationship she is at a point where she no longer wants to be in the relationship and would be long long gone if circumstances were different so for me when I see a woman in this specific situation that's in this book, I don't consider her taken. I don't consider her committed to this person who is abusing her and manipulating her and threatening her life for her to stay with him. To me that this is basically a captor captive situation that we see and not the sexy kind. And any comfort or solace she's able to find with August, she deserves and should take. That is just my personal opinion. Don't at me. But if you've read this book, I know you know what I mean. And you will probably agree with me. But there's just something about how Kennedy Ryan tells a story like this. That she just wants to gut you. Like, I've read very few of this woman's novels. And it's only because I'm terrified. Because I love each one, but they hurt me so good. So painfully. It's a thing. So, there we go. 
Um, the next one I want to talk about is a historical romance. And again, this is kind of the same situation. This, well, kind of, sort of, not really. This is Her Ladyship's Companion by Evangeline Collins. This is a situation of a woman who, she got herself um, she was compromised and so her brother made a deal with a guy and got her married off to someone who is very abusive. Um, he will leave her for many months at a time on their estate and he will go to London and whore and gamble and do whatever he wants and then he will come back and rape her and abuse her, try to get her pregnant. When that doesn't work he'll leave again and this is a cycle she's in. She has this cousin who decides that she deserves a paramour, deserves someone to treat her well, to pleasure her, to show her the joys that sex can have. And so her friend hires an escort for her to come and stay at her estate with her for two weeks and to teach her these pleasurable ways. And so there's cheating in this book because this woman is married, but she has been abused and isolated and left alone because of one indiscretion she had as a youth. She has been treated like this fallen woman and mistreated by her husband and I this also had like this mix this trope mixed with one of my favorite tropes because I actually really love the male escort or when it's a you know male prostitute because I feel like there's not enough examples of those um and I really love this hero and how he knows from the get-go he's used to having these women fall for him because he is perfect and beautiful and tells them what they want to hear and he is struggling to hold himself apart and to make sure that he doesn't lose his heart to this woman who he has no hope of being with but spoiler alert it's a romance so they will find a way to be together um this was also great to see a hero who's not the strongest baddest man around like this woman's husband he is a pugilist he is a huge and tough and scary man and our hero like he can't compete with him in that way and it's so it's very interesting to see how things go down then this is one that gets a little stickier and this is a book that i don't like seeing it in it you know this isn't a case of spousal abuse happening so the person is cheating this is a case of well I'll explain it so it's our way by T.L. Swan if you haven't heard me talk about this book this book is just it's amazing um T.L. Swan writes big band books so this is about two best friends Nathan and Eliza and they have been friends for 10 years Nathan has lived his life as a gay man since he was a teenager he's never slept with a woman before but some things in his sexuality are changing and growing and he starts to be attracted to his friend Eliza and realizes that maybe his sexuality isn't as clear-cut as he thought it was all this time so as he is exploring his sexuality he is afraid to dive into something with Eliza and then not be able to have sex with her because his body wouldn't be attracted. So even though he's already started to tell Eliza how he feels and they've messed around a little bit, he goes to test out his sexuality with some women who are not Eliza. So the reason why this book is still a favorite is that I understand how deeply he loves Eliza like we see it we know but he's just afraid of letting her down and he's afraid of taking that jump with her and then not being able to please her the way that he wants he's afraid he might hurt her there's a really cool scene in this where he thinks that he couldn't pound a pussy the way that he can a man and, she, and she's like oh honey <laughs> We can handle it, okay? We can handle it, which is really sexy. But he's so conflicted and, like, it's very frustrating. Like, as a reader, you're like, you motherfucker, just talk to her instead of trying it with these women um, who will use that against you later would be the best way to say it. I freaking love this story, but this is a story that has those elements in it where, to me, what he does is cheating on her. Um... And it's very hard to like, it's hard for her to get over and it would be hard for me to get over because it's like, I thought we were going to experiment this together. And instead of trusting me, the person that you love, you trusted like a stranger. So, all right, the next trope we're going to move on to is epistolatory romances, or in case you don't know, that's like pen pals or letter writing, or we got to know each other through, um, 
you know, like texting or email or like a dating site, all of those things, I kind of put them into this category of like where you don't know who the person fully is when you're writing to them. So this one, we have a couple historicals again to talk about. So we will do that. Um, I think both of these ones won't be a surprise to you. Um, and there definitely are a lot of historicals that fit into this, but I didn't want to just list historicals. Um, also, I don't like all of those ones. That's the point. I'm not a huge fan of this trope. And so a lot of times I feel like it's done not the greatest and it ends up dragging on for too long and it just gets annoying to me. So I wanted to show too that it does really work for me. So one of those is actually Love in the Afternoon by Lisa Claypez. So this is book five in the Hathaway series. It's the final sibling. And this one is actually Beatrix. So we do have a step back, so we'll show you. And this one is so sweet. This one actually has like little illustrations in it too. It's so cute. Um, it like draws a picture, this puppy. But this is about um, Captain Christopher Phelan, who Beatrice's friend has been writing letters to him. And she's actually going to like write a Dear John letter to him and be like, I don't really want to write letters to you anymore. And Beatrice, she wants to keep writing letters to him. Even though when she's met him in person before, he had kind of like didn't really like her. Beatrice is seen as kind of the odd one. She's obsessed with animals. The Hathaways themselves are kind of like looked down upon, um, even though now they have some quite wealthy brother-in-laws and things like that. And anyway, she takes over writing letters and she starts to really fall for him and they have this amazing connection together. Um, and after Chris or Christopher goes through kind of a trauma, he ends up getting sent home and now he's a hero. And so this woman that she was masquerading as decided that maybe she does want Christopher. And isn't it nice that Beatrice had been writing the letters this whole time and kept this connection going because now he's a hero. But Beatrice knows the soft, gentle, beautiful side of Christopher and knows that this other woman is not meant for him, that it will not work out. But she doesn't know what to do about it. Um, and I really love this because I love how he finds out. I feel like it doesn't get drawn out for too long. I love the Hathaways, so that's just a plus for me as well. And I love the trauma that Christopher's been through. I like the stuff that we're dealing with in this one. Um, and yeah, I just feel like it's Lisa Claypez. Sorry that I'm a bit biased, but not sorry. I love her. Then, of course, we have To Sir Philip with Love by Julia Quinn. Again, this one works for me because it starts the book with him finding out who he was writing letters to. And, like, it wasn't a secret. They used their own names. You know, it was who we thought each other was. But Philip actually was keeping a couple secrets. The fact that he has twins who are terrible and he's actually really looking for a new mother for his twins more than he's looking for a wife for himself. Um, Philip is a botanist. He works with his flowers. Eloise is, you know, the fifth child of the Bridgertons and she kind of gets forgotten in the middle there sometimes. And so she took her chance with this man she'd been writing letters to that she was going to go after him and get him for herself and then see what happens with him. And so this one is hard. The, Philip has a dark past, like his wife committed suicide, which is how they started writing to each other in the first place. Um, his children are rebelling and he doesn't know how to deal with it. He has a lot of anger hidden inside and he's afraid of taking that out on his kids because that's what was done to him and his brother. And so instead of facing that and trying to come up with a way of like how to discipline without using anger, he leaves it in the hands of nannies and governesses and it's like not working. And then Eloise comes in and she's like, I don't know if I want to marry you. You seem to be kind of neglecting your kids. Like what's going on with this? Um, and then her brothers show up and we need to make some decisions is what happens there. So this one works for me. I mean, it's a Bridgerton book, so... I'm not going to pretend that I am not a whore for the British kids, So Then we have Letters to the Lost by Bridget Kimmerer. This is actually a YA contemporary novel and it works for me as a like letter writing book though. So I had to show it. Um, my friend Murphy Napier, um, she's the one who first turned me on to this series and I love Bridget Kimmerer and now I've read quite a few of her books. And this one is about 
this girl who her mother died and she writes letters to her mother and leaves them at the cemetery. And then we have our hero who he has to do community service at the cemetery and he sees her leaves these letters and he starts writing back to her. And of course it's the case that in their high school they go to the same high school and they hate each other at the high school even though he pretty soon figures out who he's writing letters to and he knows he doesn't think that she'll give him a chance in real life. This one is right on the edge of what doesn't work for me but it worked for me because of the grief and what was happening there and the fact that he wanted her to be able to grieve and not make it about himself but also he was looking for someone to be able to talk to as well. So this one shouldn't work for me but it, it does and it was a book that was really emotional and really like brought brought a lot of emotions up that were really beautiful. So, yeah. And then the last one for this topic I want to bring up is Top Secret by Serena Bowen. <laughs> I'm going to be doing a gay romance recommendation and this one's also going to be in there because this one is, wow, this is, okay, this one has a complicated setup. So there's this couple and they're thinking of doing a threesome to like spice things up. They're in college, by the way, so good for them. And so there's this site where you can go on to find a third for a threesome. And so the best etiquette for this is for the same sex, like the partner who's the same sex as who they're reaching out to is the one who reaches out just so jealousy doesn't get in the way. Um, and the guy that he messages actually asks like, so will you want me to like touch you as well? Or is like your, your girlfriend supposed to be like the focus of this? Like, are we both doing stuff with her? And so they end up having these conversations where he's like, well, you should see if you like this too, because it's like, this could be really fun for you as well to have some things done to you. And so it was kind of cool because I liked how the things got brought up and um, then such and such happens and like they end up break this couple ends up breaking up pretty early on but then he keeps emailing with this person that he was going to do it with and then we end up figuring out who it is and of course it's one of his like enemies on campus and once they find out who the other is and he knows that this guy is maybe interested in him things escalate from there so this one totally worked for me because I loved the one guy who was kind of experimenting with his sexuality and didn't, it hadn't even crossed his mind that he wanted to be with a man before. So this is a little bit of a gay for you, but I told you I'm kind of a whore for that. Whoop. Book whore. I'm also one of those straight white women who wants two guys to go at it. And I'm sorry. That's who I am. That's what I find pleasant from. I'm sorry. It's not politically correct, but I don't care. So yeah, this one worked for me because I like that it was experimenting in new ways. It was really fun. All right, and then the last category we're going to talk about is the bully romance. Man, do I really not like bully romance. <laughs> but a couple of my favorite books last year were bully romances. And I'm going to tell you how they worked for me. So the first one I'm going to talk about is actually one I read a while ago. Like, I read this a long time ago. Um, and it was one of the first ones that I read. So I don't have perfect recollection of this one. But it was Cruel Intentions by Siobhan Davis. Um, and this was a trilogy. This one starts in a high school and like there are these two enemy families and he wants to try to get under the girl's skin to get back at her family. And then her father's actually this really evil guy. Um, and like her, she's supposed to have an arranged marriage, which is like they're in high school and we're apparently doing arranged marriage stuff. And so she ends up being bullied by this group of boy. This isn't a reverse harem though. It's not. But the group of them do bully her. It's just there's one guy that she set aside to be with more. So this one worked for me because of what the arc of the whole story was. So it started as a bully romance because they're from enemy families. So it made sense where the bullying was coming from. You know, that that's what was happening there. I really like for it. If there's going to be bullying happening, I kind of like for there to be sense behind it. Does that vibe with you? I feel like a lot of times when I see bully romances, it's like, she's pretty so I'm bullying her and I'm just like I don't really get it but that being said I also really like Truly by Carmel Rhodes and I feel like this is kind of the case of one of those I actually have a signed copy of this one because it came in the book box and this one has like a road trip involved so this one starts on graduation day and Truly is getting dumped by her boyfriend 
So then she still goes to a party, and I think it's her her now ex-boyfriend's stepbrother. I can't remember how they know each other. Yes, my ex-boyfriend's half-brother. And so he's had a thing for her for quite a while, and he kind of corners her at a party, and he assaults her. But in the, in the way of, like, she really enjoys it, and she's saying no, but he, like, does it anyway. It's assault. It's a thing. But this is dark romance, and that happens. And then he's able to manipulate it so that this, this road trip she was supposed to take with her best friend, he manipulates it so that he goes with. And so he has her under his thumb for this whole road trip. So... I really like the back of it because it says like the summer after senior year was supposed to be the best of my life. It was supposed to be full of adventure and self-discovery and making love under the stars. It was supposed to be about losing myself and finding my way. Only it wasn't supposed to start like this. I wasn't supposed to go to that party. He wasn't supposed to notice me. The hot jock with the trust fund and the chip on his shoulder. My ex-boyfriend's half-brother. Noah Tr Tredesco is so far out of my league he might as well be playing a different game. Noah wasn't supposed to look twice at a girl like me, but he did. Now that I'm on his radar, my life will never be the same. So, this one worked for me. It's hot as hell. Like, God, I love this shit. So, then of course that leaves us with the ultimate dark romance, bully romance that just busted through all of my everything, and that's Untouchable by Saint Mariano. I don't know who I am. I don't know why this worked for me. This book that starts with an assault, a vicious face fucking by this complete asshole, turns into this like psychological game between these two, turns into this epic love story. And I don't know, I don't know who I am, but this book is in my like, it was in my top 10 of last year. I just, Sam Mariano has a way of just tapping right into my id and it was just like I will suck that up with a straw I will smoke it lick it dunk it fuck it whatever I want it and that's Carter Mahoney the ultimate just psychopath who I would never want him to turn his eyes on me but this book just blew my fucking mind and so bully romances don't work for me and the reason this one works is that it absolutely starts with a bullying situation Zoe had turned in this guy named Jake who had assaulted her and it got him suspended from the football team and so him and his buddies Carter Jake and this other guy they corner her in a classroom and Carter face fucks her in there that's what happens and then he shows up at her house the next day with soup and her notes from school and he becomes obsessed with her and she doesn't know what to do about it because Everybody just thinks he's just this sweet guy. He just brings you soup. What a nice guy. But he wants to fuck her. And then he wants more from her. There you go. Okay, so there you go. There are 10 books that I love with tropes that I hate. Let me know which books just you don't understand why they work for you. Like you, you can't understand how it is that this author made this situation that you just hate into your favorite. I would love to know what those books are because I want to check them out too. Thank you so much for watching. If you're interested in channel memberships, you can check that out down below. Um, make sure that you check out my other social medias, always in my link tree down below. And yeah, I hope you have a great day and you can watch some more videos right now. Bye!